Hey everybody, welcome back. Another Gravity Ace dev stream. Um, hey Robert, Fox, Slacks. Cheers. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. <clears throat> Alright. I was messing around with this guy again. planet previews. One thing I did, uh, I mean, I was messing around with it too much, but one thing I did was I added a uh, bumpiness to the surface. What is going on there? Oh. Oh, nuts. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So what I've done here, this error, is because I copied this scene to make a new scene and what I didn't do was I didn't make the script unique. <laughs> so I, um, I ended up, these two guys ended up sharing the same script and I tried running this one and it doesn't work. Surprise. So let me just fix that right now real quick. Make unique, save, user, chooser, Level chooser, save. And I can go into my handy dandy uh, source control. And I can revert this guy. All right, now this should work. So. Yeah, I made the uh, see the surface. I made it more bumpy, basically. And um, I don't know. I just liked it better. Looks more realistic now, I guess. A little more detail. Doesn't look as smooth and metallic as it did before. Plasticky. Anyway, I could probably spend forever messing around with this thing. Uh, but. <laughs> I could probably spend forever messing around with this thing, but um, you got to call it done at some point. Man, that is a heck of a delay, isn't it? I don't know what the deal is with that. My audio and my video are desynced. Looks like about a two second delay. That's weird. <clears throat> so that guy I'm going to consider done. That guy I'm going to consider done. I'm working on the chooser now for end u or for user created campaigns. So this will be a campaign list and this will be a campaign or a level list here. And I've made a okay start on it. Right? I've got a list of campaigns here. When you pick one, it gives you the list of levels, right? So that's a start. Um but one thing I need to do, obviously, is I want to show the name of the campaign, not the path to it. But I still need to be able to access the path to know which one you picked. So, what I'm doing is, there's a, these are both item lists. And, um, Yeah, these. This is an item list and this is an item list. And item lists have an API where you can add an item, which is a string, or with an optional icon. Uh, and you can also do a, where is it? You can add some metadata. There it is. You can add some metadata. So, yeah, so I can add an item, and then I can add metadata to that item, which would be the level ID. I'm kind of talking out loud to myself here a little bit to make sure that that makes sense to me. All right, so this would be the name. 
and then set meta set item. How come that's not showing up? Because uh, I typed it wrong. Set item metadata. And the index is going to be, well, this is going to add items to the end of the list, right? So this should just be, the index should just be the last item in the list. Uh, and I probably have a count. Item count minus one, right? And the metadata will be the campaign path. That's what this gives me. So this gives me, this is my API for the campaigns. It gives me a list of all the paths to all the different campaigns. So this is for each path in the campaign list. Then I get the name of the campaign, add it as an item, and I set the metadata for that item to be equal to the actual campaign path. <clears throat> so that's what it does in the ready. And then down here, when you select one, it passes in the index for the one that you selected. Uh, and then I loop through the levels. I get a list of levels. And I want to do not the item text, because that will give me the name of the level. I want to get the um, item metadata, which will be my path. And then this 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 gets the levels for that campaign path and then for each of the levels I want to add the again this will be the name the name will be something and then I'm going to do the same thing here where I do mission list uh, add um, item metadata um, L right? that's the level path and the name of the level is going to be, uh, what will it be? I, I always forget this, and I keep telling myself I need to write a, an API for this. <clears throat> I need to do level data equals get level L. And the name is level data something. this level data dot get value level name default right so this I should just say I should turn this into a API um, and I'm gonna do that right now get level name yeah see so I don't even have one get level name level absolute path I'm just gonna do that and then I don't have to remember this anymore I'm doing this just because I, I use this pattern all the time, so I'm just adding this function to make it easier for me. So now I can just replace this with, uh, I can do this. Uh, and you see how it's highlighting name in a slightly different color? It's because name is a uh, native property of nodes. So I'm shadowing it right now, right? So I'm going to change that to campaign name, campaign name. And we do the same thing here. Level name, level name. Let's see how that looks. So I've got my campaigns now instead of the paths. And when I click one, it should give me the list of level names instead of the level paths. All right, all right, it's okay. 
Uh, oh, I did this API wrong. Uh, this should be um, mission list dot um, account. What was it? Get item count is what it was. Again, I typed it wrong. This one. Oh. All right. <clears throat> Shoot. Is it not add item metadata? It's set item metadata. And you see the item lists already have a uh, scroll bar connected to them, so that API or that uh, interface works fine. Uh, I, I need to do something with the panels because I don't like the fact that they're blocking the view of the star field behind it. They look a little out of place in this interface, right? And then I need a launch button uh, when you pick one. Um, hmm. Now there should be something, right? So you need some button to launch it. I like being able to see which one you selected. So, well, let's just do that real quick. <clears throat> We're just building it as we go. So, when you select an item from the mission list, what should it do? Uh, well, it should do what the what this chooser does um, when one gets focus. which is all of this stuff. Hmm. So, right, I could just copy all of this code. I could copy all the code, um, but, you know, my instinct says this should be in some common function. And the function needs to take a level. And then here I can just say, you know, update stats or something, which is telling me that this whole piece here, which includes this stuff and this, like these two guys here seem like they want to be a component their own scene. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's do this. We'll add a control. We'll call it stats. We're going to move these in there just like that. Okay, um, then I'm going to make this into a scene. Stats, we'll call it. It's fine. Oops, I saved it in the wrong place. It's okay. I'll just move it right now. Just move it to level chooser there. stats right and I'm gonna change this guy he needs see how the fonts and everything are all wrong 
I need to have this guy load my theme. There. And then, <clears throat> hmm. These two things. Um, I'm just going to have that go top left, and this one will go... Actually, do them center top and center top. And this can go full rect, why not? And this can go like that. Something like that. So this is going to throw off the look over here. <laughs> or maybe it won't. Oh, because I'm using it here. Right? Yeah. In fact, let me... Let me... Uh, let me remove this. And add it again now. I think it's it lost its reference because I moved it after I um, after I saved it. Right, so there it is, right? But <clears throat> I can take it and do this. Change the size of it. Right. Get right back in there. Yeah. <clears throat> and I can move this guy just down a little bit. Yeah, see now it's more centered in there. Okay. So now I've got this stats scene. So I want a stat script, okay? And in my level chooser here, let's look at this one as well. Uh, well, let's let's do let's do it here. So I'm going to take this code from here, and I'm going to put it in here and make it work here. Um, set level. Something like that. Mm -hmm. I give it this long name just so that I know exactly what it's supposed to be without having to comment or document it or anything. You just tell by the name what it's supposed to be. Alright. No errors. So this just, you pass in a level string and it's going to update the UI. Um, it's going to add all the different stats. And then it's going to add, turn on or off this message depending on what it needs to. So here, I can just call stats, <clears throat> set level, um, um, mission list, get item meta data index, right? And I can do the same thing here uh, by replacing, deleting those, adding in stats, right? Let's reposition this guy. Basically doing the same thing we did before. Uh huh. And in here, we're going to do the same thing. But this looks a little different because of the different uh, UI implementations for the different things. 
right? So they're both calling set level in the stats, and the stats knows what to do. And they're both calling the same method. So I only have the code written that does all this stuff in one place. Let's see. Hmm. So it's trying to update. Yeah, so this actually doesn't belong there in stats. I'm going to put that back up at the higher level. Like this. And this just needs to be... Get level name. Uh, let's do this. Do that. And then level up to path. Don't actually don't need that. Here in chooser, I'm going to do a similar thing. Just like that. I want to separate out. It's working. All right, it's setting the title up here. Loading the stats, although there's not much in the way of stats to see right here. And I don't know if I like this UI at all. One thing I like about the um, this UI is it gives you a lot of information. What was that about? <clears throat> Gives you a lot of information just by looking at this map, right? So this is the level list. But you can see whether which ones are locked, which ones are unlocked, which ones are ready to play. Um, I think I can do a similar thing by using an icon in the user list I reckon I could use the same icons let's try that and see how that looks so this takes an icon right um, I should be able to hmm. well I was going to say I could use my reuse those icons, but I can't actually reuse those exact files, I don't think. Because they're sprite sheets. Right, they're sprite sheets. Maybe. 
um, I mean, I can pass in a texture, right? And a texture, I think, can be um, an atlas. So I could create a texture that's an atlas texture and then, you know, um, use it in here. It just seems like a lot of work. I'm just going to, I've already, I'm just going to save these out. So this one will be the uh, unlocked icon. So our icon unlocked. Uh, no, cancel. big is that? Is that 12 by 12? Mm, 13 by 12? We'll save that as icon unlocked. And then we'll take this one. And we'll save that one as icon unlocked. And we'll do another one. And we'll save it as So this is a little bit of art production issue, right? Do I want to spend more time producing art or more time producing code? Do I want to, like how much effort do I want to put into not repeating myself? And I could put a lot of effort into the code so that I don't need to redraw or copy the graphics. Or I could just copy the graphics and with the graphics change, I need to just change it twice. Um, I have a feeling the art will change less than the code. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. the way the search works. Let's just do that for right now. I do need to get the status of the level, but let's just see how that looks. All right, that's fine. Okay, so the status of the level is this. If status equals, right? So I'm gonna go icon like that. That.
got to be completed. I have to rename this. Sorry. Locked, unlocked, completed. In fact, I can just say the default is locked. If it's completed, then you change it. If it's unlocked, you change it. Mm-hmm. 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 See, that's better. And it matches, right? Unlocked. Locked. Locked. Right. If I like this UI, maybe it's just something. Oh, let's just get it functional, and then, and then uh, we'll see where we go from there. Maybe I'll like it better if I take off that panel background. Campaign list, custom styles, background empty. Mission list, custom styles, background, empty. Mm, maybe it does need something. It needs something. Let's go 50%. Let's go 25%. And we'll do the same thing here with the campaign list. Flat. Actually, let's take this one. This campaign list style box and we'll just save it. mission list style box and we'll save it <clears throat> so we'll save it as a uh, uh, list VG UI and then I can reuse it here in fact let me just do this there it is I can just drag it there, and I can drag it there, I can drag it there. I don't think I need it here. And then same thing here. It's there, and I'll drag it, drag it there. got this what is that there's like a line between each one which I don't think I need it's interfering with that grid um, let's see if we can find a way to turn off that line separator line between each item one column it's fine Any 
Maybe it's in there. Let's see. Now, see, it's still showing the line between each one. I wonder. Maybe it's documented in here somewhere. Guide color. The guideline is a line drawn between each row of items. That's one of the theme properties. Uh, so it would be here, right? No. Custom colors, guide color. So I can make the guide color transparent. That should make the guides go away. Like that. All right, so now there's no line in between each of these items anymore. That looks cleaner. Mm -hmm. And if I attack this with the gamepad, what do I get? Gamepad's not doing anything. Hmm. I wonder if that's a setting in here. Looks like I might need to write some code to get it to use the gamepad within these lists, but that doesn't seem right. Zombie Craig. Thanks for the follow. These guys are really intended to be used with um, the mouse, which makes sense. Select pull list of items. Selection with the right mouse button, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, hmm. Does this have a focus? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I can move the focus. If this has the focus, I should be able to move the focus back and forth with the gamepad. No, can't.
really seems like it's mouse only. It seems so weird. I mean, in theory, I guess I could write some code and it would let me move up and down here in this list. That would be pretty easy. <clears throat> but then if I go left and right, what should it do? It should go back here or here and then go up and down in here, right? So you'd go here, up and down, or go over here, up and down. But maybe I want to just have it in here and you go up and down, up and down, pick one with A, and now you're in here and you would go up and down, up and down, and you could pick one with A, or you could cancel. And if you canceled, it would go back here, up and down, up and down. If you canceled again, it would go back to the main screen. Hmm. This isn't even picking up my mouse pad. Is my mouse pad plugged in? Or my game pad? Hold on, my game pad might not be plugged in. Oh my lord. There's the gamepad working. <laughs> okay, so it works fine. <laughs> I thought it was strange. Uh, for some reason, I had to unplug my gamepad and plug it back in. All right, getting there, getting there. Uh, you see how the text goes right up against the edge? I don't like that. So I need to add some uh, spacing around the edge. Let's see what we can do. This is spacing between items. This is spacing between lines. I want spacing all around, uh, which I think is going to be in this style here. And there's going to be a content margin. That's what I want. So let's just say it's five pixels all around. And because I'm using this as a shared resource, I'm saving it, it should affect both of these. There we go. Now we're cooking. So to launch, I guess maybe um, double click, although I don't use that interaction anywhere else. Maybe instead of maybe instead of clicking, it should be focus or mouse entered. Yeah, no clicking. So mouse over, mouse over. Nah, I, I think I just want a launch button. So you click, click launch launch let's just try that and see so button launch
Hey, hey. you guys going out? Yeah. All right. Peace Have fun. Peace yeah, so we'll call this launch. Let's um, just change the size of this a little bit. I'm just messing around with stuff just to see. Just real rough, right? It's like a rough draft here. Just to see how it looks. And it's easy to change. Right, and then you'd launch, right? Maybe. Let's see. I, I don't like... <laughs> I mean, I don't like it. Uh, I don't like how these are different sizes. What if I did that? Maybe that's better. But then, you know, I kind of don't like all this wasted space. It's okay. It'll do for right now. Let's just get it working. Like I said, let's just get it functional and we'll see what happens. Um, right. So we'll call this our launch button. And we will put a pressed on here. All right. <clears throat> so when you select a mission, the launch button will show itself. And when a mission when nothing is selected, it will hide itself, right? So this is the mission list. When the when something in the mission list is selected, the launch button will show. When nothing in the mission list is selected, the launch button will hide. Simple. And then when the launch button is pressed, it's going to do exactly what the chooser does over here. Now oh, maybe. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Let's try that. We'll try that. Um, we do this, we do this. Yes, we do this. <clears throat> So this level would be the mission list, get item metadata for the selected item in the mission list, right? And the selected item in the mission list is mission list dot get selected, Get child, get selected, get index. This gives you an array of the items that were selected, but it doesn't tell you which one, which index of the one it was. Is there just a Index, no. select, what is that? Hey Aaron. Nope, I have not. Uh, I have a feeling, I, I kind of know what a game I want to make. Just so you guys, everybody knows, uh, Vim Jam started yesterday. VIM jam. Almost 2,000 people in it. The theme is there and back with a focus on collectibles. It's a week long jam, so I have until Friday. And um, I don't know. As soon as the theme was announced, I already started stressing out about it, so I don't know if I'm going to do it. <laughs> Game jam stressed me out. Um, 
But I have an idea for the game I want to make. It's basically just going to be a top-down shooter. Uh, like a like a bullet hell shooter, almost. Where you can collect power-ups. Um, but the, the idea I had is that you actually don't just collect them as an abstract thing. They actually stick to you. And your orientation when you touch them determines where they stick on you. And there will be shields, and there will be uh, guns, and there will be thrusters. So if you like slammed into a extra thruster and it's on the left side of you, it might make it so that when you go right, you'll go much faster than if you go left. And if you have a shield on one side of you, obviously it only affects, it only shields you on that side. And if you attach a gun, it's going to shoot in that direction. And if you want to have good coverage, you need to make sure you're oriented correctly before you bump into these things. So that's the collectible part of it. I don't know about the there and back again yet. That one's got me stumped right now. Um, but I might just spend a couple days on it, um, playing around with the idea, just to see if it's an interesting idea. And um, I might not take it to the finish line. orbiting a black hole that's cool another idea i had was and i don't know how this would get implemented but uh it would be like a mini golf game where you collect the actual holes not the not the course but the actual physical empty space where the hole is that's the thing you collect and then when you go to the next course you can put the hole somewhere so the next course would have two holes and I'm not sure. Somehow they would be connected or like teleporting portals. I don't I don't know. That's as far as I got with that idea. This says is anything selected? This gives you an array of the selected items. I'm looking for something that gives me an index. This is the item at the given physical position on the screen, which is not what I want. I just want to know what's selected right now. This, this API, I feel like, could be better, or I'm misunderstanding it. I, mean, I could just save the value. Nop or nope? Or nop blank blank? Mysterious. Let's do this. <laughs> nop it is. Um, so I know right when they select So I can actually do this. Here. <clears throat> right, so I have my launcher scene. So whenever they pick a mission, it's gonna update the level for the launcher scene. But they're not gonna, it's not gonna show the launcher scene until you push the launch button. <clears throat> Let's see. Bap. Bap, bap. Mm. Why did it do that? Right, right, okay. Hey, game dev unknown. Hey, you guys are all working on games too, right? 
I I have a terrible Swiss cheese memory. Hold on a second. My washing machine's going to the other room. If you guys are working on games, why don't you give me a refresher on what you're working on by pasting a link in to whatever you're working on right now. Anything you want to show off, I would love to see it. So this, I want to say, if um, I'm not using this, this will be something like here. That's wrong, but something like that. And then let me move this down here. And I'm going to put a little guard in here. If last focused control. There are days I don't even want to touch a computer. Oh yeah, I feel that right now. <laughs> I felt it last night pretty hard for sure. Uh, <laughs> yesterday was a rough day, man. Uh a lot of shitty news came out yesterday uh, in the U.S. And um, we had an earthquake last night in California. It was about 11.30. And uh, that was kind of funny because, I don't know, you know, earthquake happen hits you in the middle of the night <laughs> and nobody in your family wakes up. Uh, even the dog just stayed asleep. We're just like, ugh, I can't even be bothered to get out of bed for an earthquake. Yeah, I know. We're on fire. The earth's shaking. So yeah, yesterday I was like, I'm over it. Right, so what I want to do is when I hit the launch button, the focus goes here, then it goes here, and when you hit cancel, I want it to go back here to whatever was selected, right? So I want to say the last focused control is this again. The last focused control is mission list. Would it always just be mission list? I mean, it probably would be. Bap, bap, bap. Bap, bap. Hmm, that's curious. Keyboard control doesn't work for these either. I don't like these UI elements. They're... Okay. It's losing focus every time. I did. This is turning into spaghetti. Okay. All right, what do we got here? Crash is doomed. No 
sound. Don't know why I'm not getting sound. Pretty cool. <laughs> uh, that's cool. That is cool. How do you like working in uh, 3D in Godot? I've done a little bit of 3D in Godot, and it's like, I don't like the workflow. Like, not not Godot specific, but just the whole 3D workflow I kind of hate. <clears throat> just the whole idea of making meshes, and then making textures for the meshes, and doing UV mapping, and then setting up materials, and... Like, it's already sapping the life out of me before I even see anything on the screen. to be that needs to give focus to the campaign list when it first when you first come in mm, excuse me so when you first start the scene the campaign list needs to get the focus there we go all right and then the a button needs to do something which I think is just going to be this one. And that's just going to do this again. This, when you select one of these, I want it to uh, 
I wanted to go to mission list. Ground focus. And mission list at select zero, right? <clears throat> and here I want to do campaign list.select zero. Mm -hmm. I can't do campaign list select zero until after all the campaigns are in. So let's see the list, right? Let's do that. So now when I start this scene, the first campaign should be selected automatically. And as soon as I select that campaign, enter or double click it or something, it should select the first campaign in the mission list. Right, selected. There. Right. Um, this is not triggering from this. Don't know why. Hmm. When does this get called? Oh, this doesn't get called anymore. I can erase this. This is all part of the stats now. Same within here. Did I delete it from there? I did. All right, we got another one. Uh-uh. Capital J? There it is. Oh, I like that cursor. Ooh. I see you got a little cool down the shooting. That's kind of cool. You can shoot, but not forever. Oh. I want to get those little guys. How do I get those little guys out? Alright, I'm going to have to go find a key or something, right? Oh. I've always wanted to make a game around a graveyard. But like, not like an action game. More like, more like you tend it. A gardening game, basically, but for bodies. 
An aquarium for corpses. Like you have to have people tend the grounds. You know, it's like a, what would it be? Like a business sim, like uh like a office manager or something, right? But you're running a mortuary and funeral home and uh, cemetery. I always thought that was be fun. I don't know why. So these guys don't do any damage, which is good, because otherwise I think I'd be dead already. I like the little, what do you call it, uh, little uh, altar that they spawn out of. <clears throat> little uh, monster generator. Yeah, man, that's cool. I like those games, guys. Uh, like a little sneak peek into my, mi into my mind. I've been looking at posters for the Pixies. Just for no reason in particular, except that I like them. <sighs> Controversial opinion, but the Pixies might be the best band of all time. Alright, where was I? Right, so it sets, it selects zero, and in the campaign list, I've got, I have a list of campaigns, right? So the campaign list has some stuff in it. Can you see the items that are in here? Maybe not. That's fine. I'm sure they're in there. <clears throat> and then it should should ought to go here. It's not. All right? Campaign list select zero and then nothing. It doesn't actually select it. Probably some timing issue going on between um, the ready function, the scene getting created, the signals firing. Um, I could probably do something gross like uh, yield, get tree, um, idle. I think that's right. Idle frame. That will. Oh, let's see. Maybe that'll work. Nope. Oh. Even better. Even better. I can just do this. Right. Uh, I need to hide this launch button at the start as well. So we'll do launch button dot hide right hidden pick a level right still a little wonky there 
Select, select. Oh, that worked. It should hide it because nothing here is selected. But it's not doing it until... See, it didn't, it didn't, uns it didn't hide it even though nothing's selected. It's not hiding it until it got focus. Could make it. Let's do that. Let's do mission list select to zero, right? That. It should always be mission selected. <clears throat> right? Selected. Launch. Launch. Right? It's ready to go. Uh, but when you select one, see, it makes it tough going up and down here because it, it grabs the focus to the other side as soon as you pick one of these. It doesn't work really well with keyboard. It works okay with the mouse. All right, that's fine with the mouse. But with the uh, keyboard, it behaves a little oddly. And with gamepad, it'll behave a little oddly. So I actually don't want to do that. Uh, which means I want to do hide here. Right, and then I pick one. So it is picking one there. There's the launch button. Launch button goes away. Bap, 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 bap. Let's try it with gamepad. Select, select, cancel. Select, cancel. Bap, bap. Mm hmm. Okay. It's not too bad. And then let's add a button here, another gamepad button, right here. So my gamepad buttons are, it's a little scene that I have that what it does is you tell it what type of button it should show, right? So here's the button. And I'm going to say, show me a launch button and show me a A button, right? So it's going to be a launch button and it's going to be an A button. It could be a B button, an X button, but I'm going to make it be an A button. And I'm going to put it right here. Oops. I'm put it right here over this other button. Like that. And I'm going to say, um, it's going to shadow launch button. This isn't going to work right. <laughs> this isn't going to quite work right. Uh, 
let's do instead of launch button to hide I'm gonna do disabled Always be visible. Let's see. <clears throat> Can't launch, but now I can. And if I touch the gamepad, right? But it's not quite right because until you select a mission, the launch button shouldn't actually do anything. Well, I don't know, maybe it's okay. Because you can launch the campaign and then you launch the mission. Launch, launch. Hmm. I don't know. Some work on that interaction, I think, needs to be done. campaign map and here's my user campaigns and then we'll just play this level and oh actually I don't think you can complete this level let's make this level completable so we can see it change in the UI so we'll add a uh, exit here and we'll just make it visible all the time, make it really easy. And we'll complete the level. There it is. Complete. Unlocked. So that one was complete, the next level got unlocked, third level still locked. That's a good start. I still need to show on here somehow that these levels can be in multiple sectors. Mm, I'm kind of going back and forth on that. I don't know if I want to allow... I mean, part of me wants to say, yeah, if you're making a campaign and sectors are a thing that you can do with levels, then yeah, of course, we'll let you do sectors in your own levels. But because of the way it has to be drawn in this list, um, that's more difficult to do like I could put a separator here I guess and then I could put in maybe an extra line here at the top of the sector that says how your progress on the sector but you can't actually select it um, I could get fancy I've thought about this too but I don't know how hard this would be is I could Jeez, why does it keep doing that? There's a bug there when I'm not doing something where I'm when I'm not running it from the root. This will suppress the warnings. That's not what's causing the error, but that'll suppress the warnings.
think Talon B. Talonba? Sorry, I butchered your name, but thanks for the follow. I think I'm going to do a campaign that reset caches here. There's something cached between here and the user chooser. <clears throat> and um, I'm just going to blow it away. But so in the normal campaign chooser, right, you've got this, the sector name, right, what sector it's in. You've also visually can see which levels are in the sector and you've got a progress of how you're doing in the sector, right? I've got three of the six reactor cores in this sector. I've got six of six from here. I've got zero of six from here. How to display that on this screen is the challenge I'm thinking of right now. Yeah, that took care of that bug I was having. Um, yeah. I suppose I could put it somewhere else on the screen, like down here. Sector stats, right? And then in here, I could put a separator between sectors. Or even I could put a, a heading for each sector with the sector stats and then another heading for this sector with the sector stats. Or, like I was trying to say, I could get fancy and try and do something like this procedurally. Which would involve looping through all the levels, grouping them into you know, the sector that they're in. So you have, you know, level X, Y, and Z are in sector one, level, you know, UVW or in sector two. And then having, you know, depending on how many sectors there are, grouping them into clusters and then drawing them on the screen in a semi-random way. Uh, and that would let me replicate this visual look I would then need a screen where you just pick a campaign first. So you'd scroll through the campaigns, click one. Then you'd see this screen with that campaign. And it would be procedural. But that seems... <laughs> that seems like version 2 to me. <laughs> hey, tiny big games. Yeah, that seems like a version two to me. Uh, maybe it's something I'll work on during early access. This is enough for now, I think. Uh, well, I mean, I do need to put in this the progress. How many how many of these uh, how many of the reactor cores you've got? Your progress in the sector. I need to put that on here but I don't need to do the whole procedural sector drawing thing for now. I can think about that for a later, a later date. This is fine for now. So I have a to-do here. I need, <clears throat> where's my to-do list? The good old to-do list. need to um, prevent launching uh, locked levels so that is pretty easy if it's locked when you go to launch it it's gonna play a little sound and just not do anything and I need to show reactor core progress sector progress <clears throat> And while I'm doing that, I'm sure I'll do a little bit of refinement of how the UI actually works. But that's good progress. Today we uh, made good progress. First draft done. Do, do, do.
been doing some pricing research. <clears throat> That's been interesting. Like I was saying last time, I think there's a sweet spot between 10 and uh, 20 bucks. And my lazy brain is just going, yep, $14.99 it is, right in the middle. <laughs> Which actually, I think that makes sense. It's uh, It fits in there. There's other games in this style that are about that price. Lots of indie games are hitting right at $15. Bucks. Um, if it goes on sale, I can still make a little bit of money. Steam takes a 30% cut. So of that $15... I get 70% of it, right? I get $10 and 50 cents, uh, which is fine. It's not a lot. You make it up in volume, right? It's fine. This game's not gonna make me rich, but if you price it much less than 15, you're really not gonna make very much from each copy. So yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, 15, 14.99, Launch sale will be 20, 30% off, something like that. Or the early access version will be 20, 30% off. So I'll only make $7, maybe $6 from the early access. And then when it actually launches, there'll be a launch discount probably. I'll make 8 or $9 and then it'll go to full price for a little while. It'll be, I'll make ten fifty from each copy. And then sales later on, eventually it'll be $3, right? Yeah, I mean, I need to go through the whole uh, Steam terms again because I know they have something in there about selling it multiple places that, I don't know, they have some rules. So I'm not sure exactly what they are. <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, I mean, they do let you do it, but I think they there's a stipulation where you have to offer, like if you're offering a sale price someplace else, you need to offer Steam the same sale price. Some stuff like that. Uh, I am not planning on being able to change the ship aesthetically right now. But one of the ideas I had was that you could fly into um, like some kind of power-up, right? Like maybe you'd see um, a double laser cannon or something floating there, right? And you could fly over to it and pick it up. And when you picked it up, I don't want you to just shoot double bullets. I want to actually see the ship change. Uh, so you'd gain, like the ship art would change for 10 seconds while you have that power up. Until you ran out of ammo or something. And then you'd eject it. Uh, so I'm thinking, yes, something, something like that would be some kind of customization. But I'm not thinking along the lines of like... You know, do you want a red ship or a blue ship? Or do you want the ship with more shields but less firepower? Or the ship with more firepower and less shields or more maneuverability, less maneuverability? Uh, there could be like three different ship types maybe. I'm not thinking along those lines. And I'm not thinking along the lines of like spending your coins on upgrades. I don't want a whole like tech tree. Um... That, that maybe in my next game maybe my next game we'll see the trouble with those is especially with these handmade levels is that if i it makes the balancing problem very very difficult in my mind uh, because the game is then the levels are pretty well balanced for the capabilities that the ship currently has but if the ship's capabilities are mutating as you play <laughs> um I don't even know what that would do to the level design. Uh, so that's something I need to think about from the beginning. Yeah, and if you're just talking about cosmetic changes, maybe, maybe, we'll see. Once I get into early access, I'm expecting to see a lot of feedback from people. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully, lots of people like it and I get a lot of feedback. And from that feedback, if, you know, if a lot of people say, um, yeah, man, I would love to be able to change my ship to black. I want a stealth ship. Uh, then yeah, maybe I would. Yeah, I don't. I don't keep everything in my head. If you've been watching these streams, you'd see, like, <laughs> I go into a scene I need to change, and I'm like, all right, first step. How does this thing work? And I have to, you know, learn, I have to refresh my memory on how it works. 
uh, before I can actually start hacking on it. Delete all this. All right. So that is a tidy. A tidy hundred lines of code for my user level chooser. Not too shabby. Um, I'm going to commit that because it works. That's junk. All right, so I've got my. This was the refactoring I did. And the stats, right? This new stats scene. Um, I did a little refactoring with, yeah, resetting the caches, right? Got my new user chooser scene and code. Got those icons I made, which are just copies of that sprite sheet, right? It's like one frame from that sprite sheet. Got my resource for my UI, those panels. Uh, this is noise that I don't need. Something changed in there, but I don't care what it was. And this is adding this level name API to my campaign singleton. Draft user campaign chooser completed. Needs some finessing. Needs, uh sector progress but it works pretty good yo pat on back it's the little things you gotta uh, you gotta appreciate yourself all right so I didn't get to fully cross it off my list, but I did make good progress on it today. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to call it right now for a Saturday, and I'm going to jump over to a game jam. Not Vim Jam. I'm actually in... <laughs> I might be joining a separate game jam that's just today uh, I don't know what's wrong with me um, but uh, then I'll start on Vim Jam maybe tomorrow and then uh, I'll have something to show you guys on Monday night stream uh, Monday night we might just be doing game jam and all night uh, so it'll be a different project and uh, we'll see we'll see what happens we'll see what happens you'll get to see how frustrated I get when I'm working under pressure uh, so yeah, if you if you guys are new, thanks for the follows, the the new followers. Uh, please check out gravityace.com. Tell your friends. Go on Steam. Wishlist the game. Uh, come join the Discord if you want to hang out and talk. I'm happy to talk about uh, anything you like. You know, probably end up being game dev related, but I am interested in many subjects. <laughs> uh, and come check out my Twitter, and uh, and see what I post over there. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Catch you again Monday.